Florida! This is my friend Dragon. Today we are going to do our first Funny Friday rainbow colour story. So today is what colour? Palu! <gasps> oh, red! Okay, so Dragon, there we, is going to sit here and listen to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory with us. I can get him to sit there. Stay. There you go. So we are on chapter 24, Veruca in the Net Room. Mr Wonka rushed on down the corridor. The net room, it said on the door they came to. All right, said Mr Wonka. Stay here for a moment and catch your breath and take a peek through the glass panel of this door. But don't go in. Whatever you do, don't go into the net room. If you go, you'll disturb the squirrels. <gasps> Everyone crowded around the door. Oh, look, Grandpa, look, cried Charlie. Squirrels, shouted Veruca Salt. Crikey, said Mike TV. It was an amazing sight. One hundred squirrels were seated upon high stools around a large table. On the table, there were mounds and mounds of walnuts, and the squirrels were all working away like mad, shelling the walnuts at a tremendous speed. These squirrels are specially trained for getting the nuts out of walnuts, Mr Wonka explained. Why you squirrels? Mike TV asked. Why not use Oompa Loompas? Because, said Mr Wonka, Oompa Loompas can't get walnuts out of walnut shells in one piece. They always break them in two. Nobody except squirrels can get walnuts whole out of walnut shells every time, which is extremely difficult. But in my factory, I insist upon only whole walnuts. Therefore, I have to have squirrels to do the job. Aren't they wonderful the way they get these nuts out and see how they first tap each nut with their knuckles to make sure if it's a good or bad one. If it's bad, it makes a hollow sound and they don't bother to open it. They just throw it down the rubbish chute. There, look, watch that squirrel nearest to us. I think he's got a bad one now. They watched the little squirrel as he tapped the walnut shell with his knuckles. He cocked his head to one side, listening intently, and then suddenly threw the nut over his shoulder into a large hole in the floor. Hey, mummy, shouted Veruca Salt suddenly. I've decided I want a squirrel. Get me one of those squirrels. Don't be silly, sweetheart, said Mrs Salt. These all belong to Mr Wonka. I don't care about that, shouted Veruca. I want one. All I've got at home is two dogs and four cats, six bunny rabbits, two parakeets, three canaries, a green parrot and a turtle, and a bowl of goldfish, and a cage of white mice, and a silly old hamster. I want a squirrel. All right, my pet, Mrs Salt said soothingly. Mummy will get you a squirrel just as soon as she possibly can. But I don't want any old squirrel, Veruca shouted. I want a train squirrel. At this point, Mr Salt Veruca's father stepped forward. Very well, Wonka, he said importantly, taking out a wallet full of money. How much do you want for one of these squirrels? Name your price. They are not for sale, Mr Wonka answered. She can't have one. Who says I can't, shouted Veruca. I am going to get myself one this very minute. Don't, said Mr Wonka quickly. But he was too late. The girl had already thrown open the door and rushed in. The moment she entered the room, 100 squirrels stopped what they were doing and turned their heads and stared at her with small black beady eyes. Veruca Salt stopped also and stared back at them. Then her gaze fell upon a pretty little squirrel sitting nearest to her at the end of the table. The squirrel was holding a walnut in his paws. All right, Veruca said, I have you. She reached out her hands to grab the squirrel, but as she did so, in that first split second when her hands started to go forward, there was a sudden flash of movement in the room, like a flash of brown lightning, and every single squirrel around the table took a flying leap towards her and landed on her body. Twenty-five of them caught hold of her right arm and pinned it down. Twenty-five more caught hold of her left arm and pinned that down. 25 caught hold of her right leg and anchored it to the ground and 24 caught hold of her left leg and the one remaining squirrel, obviously the leader, climbed up onto her shoulder and started tap tap tapping the wretched girl's head with its knuckles. Save her! screamed Mrs Salt. Veruca, come back! What are they doing to her? They testing her to see if she's a bad nut, said Mr Wonka. You watch. Veruca struggled furiously, but the squirrels held her tight as she couldn't move. 
The squirrel on her shoulder went tap, tap, tap in the side of her head with his knuckles. Then all at once the squirrels pulled Veruca to the ground and started carrying her across the floor. My goodness, she is a bad nut after all, said Mr Wonka. Her head must have sounded quite hollow. Veruca kicked and screamed, but it was no use. The tiny strong paws held her tightly and she couldn't escape. Where are they taking her? shrieked Mrs Salt. She's going where all the other bad nuts go, said Mr Willy Wonka. Down the rubbish chute. By golly, she is going down the chute, said Mr Salt, staring through the glass at his daughter. Then save her, cried Mrs Salt. Too late, said Mr Wonka. She's gone. And indeed she had. But where, shrieked Mrs Salt, flapping her arms, what happens to the bad nuts? Where does the chute go? That particular chute, Mr Wonka told her, runs directly into the great big main rubbish pipe, which carries away all the rubbish from every part of the factory. All the floor sweepings and potato peelings and rotten cabbages and fish heads and stuff like that. <gasps> Who eats fish and cabbage and potatoes in this factory, I'd like to know, said Mike TV. I do, of course, answered Mr Wonka. You don't think I live on caco beans, do you? But, 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 shrieked Mr Salt, where does the big pipe go to the end? Why, to the furnace, of course, Mr Wonka said calmly, to the incinerator. <gasps> Mrs Salt opened her huge red mouth and started to scream. Don't worry, said Mr Wonka, there's always a chance they've decided not to light it today. A chance, yelled Mrs Salt. My darling Veruca, she'll, she'll, she'll be sizzled like a sausage. Quite right, my dear, said Mr Salt. Now see here, Wonka, he added. I think you've gone just a shade too far this time. I do indeed. My daughter may be a bit of a frump, I don't mind admitting it. But that doesn't mean you can roast her to a crisp. I have, I'll have you know, I'm extremely cross about this. I really am. Oh, don't be cross, my dear sir, said Mr Wonka. I expect she'll turn up again sooner or later. She may not even have gone down at all. She may be stuck in the chute just below the entrance hole. And if that's the case, all you'll have to do is go in and pull her up again. Hearing this, both Mr and Mrs Salt dashed into the nut room and ran over to the hole in the floor and peered in. Veruca! shouted Mrs Salt. Are you down there? There was no answer. Mrs Salt bent further forward to get a closer look. She was now kneeling right on the edge of the hole with her head down and her enormous behind sticking up in the air like a giant mushroom. It was a dangerous position to be in. She needed only one tiny little push, one gentle nudge in the right place and that is exactly what the squirrels gave her. Over she toppled into the hole first, screeching like a parrot. Good gracious me, said Mr Salt as he watched his fat wife go tumbling down the hole. What a lot of rubbish there's going to be today. He saw it disappearing into the darkness. What's it like down there, Aunt Gina? He called out. He leaned further forward. Uh oh, I couldn't get it to happen. Who was behind him? That's right, the squirrels rushed up and pushed him in. Oh dear, cried Charlie, who was watching with the others through the door. What on earth is going to happen to them now? I expect someone will catch them at the bottom of the chute, said Mr Wonka. But what about the great fiery incinerator, asked Charlie. They only light it every other day, said Mr Wonka. Perhaps this is one of the days when they let it go out. You never know, they might be lucky. Shh, said Grandpa Joe. Listen, here comes another song. Far away from the corridor came the beating of drums and then the singing began. Veruca Salt, sang the Oompa Lumpers. Veruca Salt, the little brute, has just got down the rubbish chute. And as we very rightly thought that in a case like this we ought to see the thing completely through, we've polished off the appearance too. Down goes Veruca, down the drain, and here perhaps we should explain that she will meet as she descends a rather different set of friends. To those that she has left behind, these won't be nearly so refined. A fish head, for example, cut this morning from a honey bit. Hello, good morning, how do you do? How nice to meet you, how are you? And then a little further down, a mass of others gather round. A um, bacon rind, some rancid lard, a loaf of bread gone stale and hard. A steak that nobody could chew, 
an oyster from an oyster stew. Some liver verse so old and grey, when smelled it from a mile away. A rotten net, a reeky pear, a thing the cat left on the stair. And lots of other things as well, each with a rather horrid smell. These are Veruca's newfound friends that she will meet as she descends, and this is the price she has to pay for going so very far astray. But now, my dears, we think you might be wondering, is it really right that every single bit of blame should fall upon... Sorry, and all the scolding and the shame should fall upon Veruca Salt. Is she the only one at fault? For though she spoiled, and dreadfully so, a girl can't spoil herself, you know. Who spoiled her then? Ah, who indeed? Who pandered to her every need? Who turned her into such a brat? Who were the culprit? Who did that? Alas, you needn't look so far to find out who these sinners are. They are, and this is very sad, her loving parents, mum and dad. And that is why we are glad they fell into the rubbish chute as well. Okay, and that's the end of today's story time. To, um, on Monday, we'll have chapter 25, The Great Glass Lift. And that leaves us with just two children left, Charlie Bucket and Mike TV. Okay, I hope you all have a lovely weekend. Double key, take care, enjoy the sunshine and keep washing those hands. Bye for me and Dragon. Funny Friday.